welcome to Pet Paul Vision channel. This channel is maintained by Professor Dr. Amalini Chakravarti. As per demand and desire of the pet loving people of society, this channel is launched for various aspects of pet care management. We feel proud to open such a channel to raise the voice for them. If you like our channel, please subscribe us. Now we introduce Dr. Amalendi Chakravarti, who was a former professor and dean of West Bengal University of Animal and Fishery Science. He is an eminent professor and paid practitioner in India. He has got academic excellence to the extent of PhD and DSC. He is a fellow of Eight Society and recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award from National Pet Animal Society. After his retirement, at present he is only concerned with pet animal practice and book writing on pets. Dear viewers, I shall today take the endeavor to highlight on the aggressive behavior in dog. I tell you, aggression is very common in certain bits of dog. And aggression generally is violence or hostile appearance towards man or towards animal. Now it may be provoked. Mostly aggression is an unprovoked or inadequately provoked attack to an animal or human being. But we say aggression is the combination of both nature and nurture. Nature means inherited. Genetically they are aggressive, just like human beings. Some man or people, some people are very aggressive. They cannot, they have got very poor tolerance. Therefore they react immediately on certain fitting issue. Likewise, dog also, sometimes they inherit that. I'll, I'll later on I'll tell you what beasts are susceptible to aggression or more prone to aggression. So it is a combination of both nature and nurture. Nurture means how do you behave with the dog. So therefore this combination is important. This may also be regarded as a fight without any reasonable cause. You do not know why it is fighting or why it is trying to bite. So that cause is not known. Now I tell you the aggression in dogs, especially I am discussing on dogs, maybe of various types, types of aggression, various types, of which one is dominant aggression. Means, you know, in a society there is dominance and subordinate relation. This is, this exists in human being and this importantly this exists in animal also, especially in dog. So the dominant animal always will try, try to suppress the other. So this dominant aggression will continue to exist so long the other counterpart is not going to be submissive. It has to submit. Now I tell you there are signals. If you look at a dog, tail, if it is aggressive and dominant, its tail will raise erect, high. But if it is submissive, tail will go down. That means I am surrendering to you. I am not in a position to fight with you. Therefore you forgive me. So this dominance and subordinate relation do, do exist in our society, do exist in the canine society also. This is dominance. Second is environmental aggression. Environmental aggression means, suppose the animal is, a, is habituated in one environment and you have taken to the other environment. So that environment is very great to that dog. Therefore, there is apprehension always. And therefore, as a result of apprehension, dog may vocalize, dog may bite, right? It becomes aggressive. So environment, even in I tell you to, to summer, where there is too much of hot, temper, temperament of the dog does not remain suit and therefore it may react. 
So that type of aggression is known as environmental aggression. Then pain aggression. Suppose there is any wound or injury and as a consequence of which there is pain. But one thing, the dog cannot say that I am having pain in any part of the body. Therefore, when you say a wound, and if you want to examine the wound, so if the wound is painful, at that time it they will face to aggression. It will not allow you to touch the wound. And it is a real problem for the veterinarian, for the man who wants to heal, uh, healing, and children. They are very important. If a dog is having any pain anywhere, and if you just touch that area, consciously or unconsciously, that fellow will react. And aggression will take place. So pain is a very good example. And in our practice we see a lot of veterinarians, they used to get a bite. They used to face bite because they are handling the painful lesion. So it is very, one should be very cautious while handling the painful lesion. Then aggression may be due to illness. When the dog is sick, when it's sick, it wants to remain separated or isolated. It does not like the human company. Right? When an animal is sick and not taking any food, and remaining just like a very depressed one. At that time, if a doctor comes, want to examine the animal, so that fellow will not may not allow, because it is not feeling well. It may be there may be physical problem, there may be physiological problem, there may be mental problem. As a result of which, dog does not like that. It should be disturbed. It should be handled. And therefore, when the animal is sick or ill, at that time, if you want to handle the animal, one should be very cautious, otherwise it will bite. And it will show aggressive view. It will vocalize, initially vocalize, then it will try to bite. Or it will, eat, or it will open its teeth and show some act of aggression. And that's why one should be very, very cautious while handling the ill dog. That means aggression due to illness. Then fear-induced aggression. Fear-induced means suppose in a territory one dog is there. Some dog is there, one dominant dog is also over there. But if another dominant dog comes in the territory and occupies the territory, so it becomes it, uh, uh, very much fearful. As a result of fear, they may jump over the others and fight each other. Right? That means he will not allow the other to encroach my territory and that, that fellow wants to encroach in a new territory. So in that case conflict starts and the dog becomes very aggressive at the time. And Bhagavad like anything, but violence, signs of violence or hostility appear in the dog. Then crowd induced aggressiveness or crowd-induced aggression. When there is a lot of people, a lot of animals, a lot of, why if you take the dog there, so it becomes very much afraid. Because it is uncertain, so many people, so many uh, animals are there, who is going to be in you know, what way, it doesn't know. Therefore, as a result of apprehension, it may bite, it may chase, and therefore that is very important. So a dog should not be taken to a very crowded place, unknown place. Or even I tell you, when there is dog show, if the dogs are kept very close to each other, at that time they become jealous. One may feel that why is coming, why, why is uh, coming close to me. Therefore, fight may start. And that's why the cow, dog should not be taken to a very unknown crowded places. So we call cow aggression. Sometimes aggression to man. Aggression to, I tell you, in a family, suppose five members are there, dog is submissive to one member or two members. He doesn't like the others. 
And this is why he does not like the other, because the interaction between the two is not matching. And this, the why, why it is not matching, I'll discuss later on. It is not matching. That's why that fellow is not liking that man. Suppose a man is coming in his house, he starts barking. He starts, uh, he, was, he becomes violent. But that, that means he does not like that man. Right? But he, if another man comes, he is he's very submissive to that man. So it varies. Aggression to a man is very important. But it is not aggressive to all the men. Some family members he likes, some family members he doesn't like. Even I tell you, their psychological point is psychologically they are so strong, he knows that this man, this man does not like me. This man does not like me. And therefore, I will not behave properly with the, that man. I will not take care of that man. I will not feel, I will not bother about that man. I shall bother about the man who is actually taking care of me. So that is, there is a saying that care dependency and food dependency. The man who is caring, dog will be affectionate. Dog will be loyal to him. He or her. Because he is caring me. He is taking all sorts of care for me. So that is caring. We call care dependency. The other is food dependency. The man who is foodie feeding every day, he will never bite that man. Because he is giving me food. He is giving me nutrition. That's why I am surviving. That why he is helping me. Right? Offering me food. Therefore I will not go against him. So in that way, dog acts differently towards different man. So that is known as aggression towards man. You will find that a dog, I have seen in my practice life also, when I enter into a house, some dog start barking and barking. Some or other, he may not like my presence. But if I go to other, no problem. Dog is submissive. So it varies. Right? Just like human being, you like someone, you do not like someone. So it, similar is the situation in case of canine populations. Then protective aggression. Suppose I am here and somebody wants to attack me. So I will have to attack, reciprocate. Just like what? <laughs> so I am going to reciprocate it. And I have to protect myself, defend myself. Right? Because at that time, either you have to fight or you have to fly. So, initially I shall try to fight. That means I will show aggression with certain clinical signs that I will discuss later on. So, I will try to fight with the animal. Because that fellow is going to encroach my area or encroach my share or encroach my food or try to uh, try to take my area, right? So why should I, uh, at that time, as a result of fear, it becomes aggressive to repel the dog, right? So that is very important. Then, aggression to break means, suppose some, some dog is chained or confined to a room for a long time, not getting any space to go outside, at that time it may start aggression because he wants to break through and go outside to roam out. Then separation anxiety. This is very important for dog, I tell you. Separation anxiety means, suppose dog is having an owner. Somehow or other, the owner has gone to a different place for a long time or the, there is death of the owner. At that time, at that time, the dog feels, anybody comes, he cannot tolerate, because he is searching for that man, who actually caring and sharing me. So therefore, if it is separated, so it starts vocalization, because he is wanting that man who actually helped him so long. That is known as separation 
anxiety. Sometimes if a dog is chained for a long time, not taken care of, right? So frustration comes in. As a result of frustration, as a result of frustration, because it is, he is not able to get the desirable substances, lead for sustenance of his life, and therefore that become, he becomes aggressive. So aggression starts. We call frustration aggression. This frustration aggression also in human being also you will find frustration aggression. Suppose somebody is ill and sleeping, if you, if you go and disturb him, he will slap you. Because that is frustration. Not, not like anybody. Because he is not getting the proper things. He is not comfortable. I am not comfortable. At the same time, they are changing me. At that time, I, I, I also I shall react. Likewise, the dog also reacts. So that frustration. So, so the owner or dog loving, dog loving people, dog lover, should not make anything which may frustrate a dog. That means provide the inputs as required for the sustenance of life, as required, or the you try to make the dog as comfortable as possible so that it never gets frustrated. If it gets frustrated, so aggression will come. So that is very important. While you are using leash, nobody wants to have chain. Nobody wants to get confined by chain. So when you are wearing leash, so at that time it will be aggressive. Chain means he's chaining me, he's not, he's cuddling my freedom. And therefore it becomes aggressive. We are putting, so if leash is there, I cannot go, I will be confined to a particular place, my freedom is lost. So he may not allow to wear the leash. He will at that time resent. Right? It will not allow to apply the leash, your muzzle, whatever you call. Then sometimes fear, out of fear, fear abuse. Suppose somebody is bitten, bitten the dog, somebody is torturing the dog. So at that time to so I guess. Because yeah, it has to survive. It has to survive. And therefore we call fear or abuse. Abuse means Suppose a dog is put on a roof in a scorchy sun, sun and that fellow will burn, isn't it? If that fellow gets this opportunity, it will bite, it will be very aggressive. So this is abuse. You know, nowadays you will find in the newspaper a lot of abuse to the dogs. Dogs are misbehaved. Dogs are not properly cared. Again, and finally, I want to say about the different types of aggression I have already discussed. One important, interesting thing is that you will find when a two-wheeler or four-wheeler going in the villages, dog also running and changing the vehicle. Very interesting. We think that because he, in a village, this type of vehicle is not seldom seen. And if you see that this, this fellow has come in my village and going very fast, that means he's apprehensive. That fellow will be mischievous. That will be, to him, he's a mischief. And therefore it will run and change, along with the car. Many, many people have seen this. I myself has also uh, witnessed these things while I was going by car in a village. <laughs> so we close the window and others, so that they cannot jump and bite. So this is very, because they are also very much cautious. This is my area. I will protect my area. I will not allow any intruder to come, right? So that my, all my subordinates, or all my people who are loving me, they are safe. I am safety. That means dog is the custodian of that territory, right? He is the custodian. So I have got that responsibility and therefore I will try to protect my members. This is very important. This is very important and unusual for a animal. Now, the aggression generally comes 
acidosis of physical health means somehow or other there is some anatomical problem, fracture, osteoarthritis, this thing, that thing, painful condition. So any touch or anything, we are magnesium. Mental health, that is also very important. The mental aberration, some dogs are very excited. That is, I've already initially have told that it, it may be genetical, right? That means why I have told you that nature or nurture. So nature, naturally it has come. And family structure, that is also very important. Family structure is very important because I tell you, I have told in my previous slide on selection of dog that if the family member does not like, please don't bring a dog and give him punishment. It's a torture to him. If the family member does not like, then that fellow will act on that family, that, 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 that member will be targeted and it will show aggressive behavior. Now I tell you, all the dogs, so many dog breeds are there, around 200 dog breeds are there. All the breeds are not equally aggressive. Some are more aggressive. While we as students at the time, Dwarman, everybody is afraid of Dwarman. I have seen a Dwar man has tremendously injured a man. Dwar man has, was very, very ferocious. If it doesn't like when it will bite and bite and tear the muscles of the man. I have seen it in my life. Actually, that Dwar man was the property of son. The son was out and it was taken care of by the father. But the dog was not loving the father. And therefore one night, he actually injured the father like anything. He has to be hospitalized and his figure was, morphology was changed due to several stitches on the body due to injury. So most important is Chow Chow, is breed, which is aggressive. Then Dovaman, I already mentioned, Dovaman Pinsar, then Rottweiler. Very aggressive dog. Then German Shepherd dog also, some that all not all, some German Shepherd dogs also very aggressive, especially male. Then Puit Bull Terrier, that is aggressive. Then Siberian Husky, that is also aggressive. These are the dogs which are very, very susceptible. They are aggressive in nature. But it does not mean that the dogs I have mentioned, they are only aggressive. Others may also be aggressive due to circumstances, due to operation, right? If the freedom is denied, they are not comfortable, they may also assume aggressive behavior. Even I tell you, speeds, you cannot restrain the animal. It's very aggressive. It's very difficult to treat, very difficult to handle. Speeds also aggressive. By nature, they are not aggressive, but they also become aggressive due to some things which they are not. They are, what I am doing this is not liking, dislike, not pleasure, not comfortable. Therefore, it also start struggling and showing aggression. So these are the breeds which are aggressive in nature. If you go for the signs of aggression, signs of aggression means what is the sign the dog will produce for aggression? One is growling. Then they will produce one sound. Growling. That we call growling sound. As we say, when you are in anger, say rage gorgor that was growling. Then snarling. That is also one type of sound. Then bearing teeth, open the teeth. That is, I am going to bite you. Bearing the teeth, then longing, that is also one of the sound. Nipping means very painful pierce, bite, nipping, and finally biting. Biting is the final. Otherwise, they will not bite. They are aggressive dogs, they are not biters. They will show you that I am not liking you. You are not my desirable persons. I am showing the signs means you go away, leave me. 
And if you come to me finally, then I'll bite. So biting is the outcome of the aggression. Biting is the outcome. So if you avoid, you can avoid the biting. Otherwise, you will face biting. Biting is the last outcome. Now the question comes, why the dog becomes aggressive? Normally they are domestic, they are pet, they are companion animal, they live with the family, they live with the owner like anything, right? So, but they should not be aggressive. But why they are aggressive? I tell you, aggression is due to lack of protein. That's why therapy of aggression is protein. If you give a dog protein, 80 to 90 percent protein, or 80 to 90 percent meat or fish or flesh, 10 to 15 percent or 20 percent other other things like carbohydrate, fats and fiber, whatever it may be, dog will never be aggressive. There is a saying, or there is a myth. Don't give meat, it will be way to become aggressive, it will be violence. This is not the true picture. Science does not say so. Science says if you give meat, it will be calm and calm. Dog will be calm, animal will be calm. I give a glaring, glaring example. While I have been to Europe, I have visited many parts, many countries of Europe. I have seen the people are very healthy, long, tall, but they are very, very docile, very mild in nature. They talk very mildly. They never show any aggression. Very politely they go. If touch something touch, if say, sorry, sorry, hundred times they will say sorry. They will not they will not vocalize. They will not talk too much. They are not they are not loud. They are polite. Why? Because they take beef. Their main diet is the beef. They don't get rice. We poor people, we take rice, and rice creates a lot of energy, and we start barking like dog. If you go by a local train, you'll find a lot of noise. I have traveled in European train, no noise. Silently they sit and silently they drop. This is the difference. One thing I tell you, if you take protein, from protein, there is an amino acid known as tryptophan. Tryptophan, essential amino acid. This tryptophan will produce serotonin. It's a chemical. This serotonin is a natural mood stabilizer. It will stabilize your brain. Right? And that's why you call happy chemical. That means you are a happy man because you don't have any tension. You are not aggressive. You are not excited. Likewise, in dog also, I tell you, dog descend from wolf. Wolf takes flesh or meat. You also try to provide meat to the dog. But if you think that if I give more meat, it will be more aggressive, this theory is wrong. This theory is wrong. We people are poor in third world country. We cannot have a lot of, we cannot afford to purchase meat, we give rice, that's why our dogs are different. But if you can give protein, it will produce serotonin, serotonin will balance your brain, sedate your brain. And at the same time, it will help increase increment of appetite, digestion, sleep, memory, at the same time sexual performances. So, now a question. You will find all of us say, Damn, man is under depression. Man is under depression. Depression means if the serotonin level is high, that fellow will not go under depression. That's why there is a link between serotonin and depression. <laughs> so, in the diet schedule, if you give more protein to a dog, or protein means it may be flesh, flesh may be either meat or fish, whatever it may be, so flesh should be given. If you give flesh, in that case, aggression will be less. Fish, 
I, I, one thing I tell you for your information. Dog or canine or feline, they are the animals which can live only on meat. You see the tiger of the zoo or the tiger of the forest. They go for meat. Nothing else. Who is going to uh, cook them for rice? No. So they only remain on meat. Now the question comes, all the components are needed for the health. Could be provided, could, 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 could come from, could be derived from the meat? You know, the answer is yes. Dog or canine or feline species, they can produce or synthesize whatever is required for the sustenance of life out of flesh. This is the beauty. Out of flesh they can create everything. But we, the human being, we cannot. We have to opt for other, other things also. They can create everything. Even vitamin C is being produced from the flesh, which is not possible for others. One has to supplement. Here you need not to supplement, you only supplement meat. And they will take care, out of meat they will take whatever is needed for the body. They will synthesize whatever is needed for the body. That is a very unique property of the animals, of the forest. Right? Because they go, they go for prey. Who is going to cook them? For rice? Who are going to cook rice for them? Isn't it? Who is going to give them your uh, curd or milk? No. So, Food is very, very important here at SL. Protein therapy is important. If you want to listen to the aggression, you can try with protein. Put from protein, tryptophan, and from tryptophan, serotonin level will be increased. That is important. Again, serotonin, there is another hormone. I was telling that dog likes this man, dog does not like that man. Why? Because there is a hormone known as love hormone. I love him. He loves me. That hormone is oxytocin or cuddling hormone. Right? Oxytocin is cuddle, cuddle hormone or love hormone. Right? If the, this hormone is, exists in you, dog will love you. If the hormone is level is low in you, dog will not love you. Well, at the same time, I tell you, from the posterior pituitary, another hormone is being released that is known as vaso vasopressin. Vasopressin is very, very. Uh, vasopressin is not a good hormone, right? It's a undesirable hormone. So, if the vasopressin is excess. The dog will start barking, dog will start chewing furniture and others, chewing windows, urinating and defecating here and there. We call villain hormone. Right? And here drooling, there will be excess drooling, excess panting, all these things will come as a result of So balance all balance of these things is very, very important. Now, if you want to control the aggression, we can go for certain measures. Already I have discussed about tryptophan. Tryptophan increases the serotonin level. Feeding more tryptophan may improve aggression. And if you go for the diet, egg is one, cheese is one, pineapple is one, sweet potato is one, salmon oil is one, nut is one, one. Blueberries is one, sweet fruit already have told, oily fish, whole brown rice. They, if you give this things to a dog or a man, whatever it may be, aggression will be minimized. Then what we can do for the dog who is aggressive, we can go for a trainer. That means very experienced trainer, aggressive trainer. A dog, trainer who can handle the aggressive dog violent dog. So training is very important. Protein therapy already I have mentioned. Then we can make castration of the dog. 
castration also may minimize the aggressive behavior. Then extraction of tooth, if there is no option, then try to extract the tooth, especially in scissor and canine. So the biting is not harmful. Then we can go for a lot of exercise. That may also create less aggressiveness. Then there are coming collar, coming shirt, eh? coming jackets, all these things you can wear if there is excess aggressiveness. Or you play more time with the dog. Try to play more time with the dog. So aggressiveness will be minimized. Then other things, mood, alternative drugs. I will not mention about the drugs, you can consult the veterinarian. There are drugs which may alter the mood, just like human beings. So mood, alteration drug may be given to a dog who seems to be missing. Right? So finally, what I can say, the aggression may be by nature, where you cannot do, you cannot do substantially because it's natural, aggressive. And second thing, nurture means how you maintain the dog, how much time you are spending for the dog, how much love and affection you are giving, providing to the dog, right? So love and affection and a comfortable environment will minimize the aggression. Otherwise, it will continue to aggress it. The aggression will ultimately lead to biter and the dog will become a biter dog. And the consequence of the biter dog may not always be worthy. Sometimes it may be. Sometimes it may be very worst. Right? So, this is allowed aggression. So, dear, dear, dear viewers, uh, we are going to have another videos on dog bite because dog bite is also very important in the society and the incidence of dog bite is very rampant. Thank you very much for lending your valuable ideas. Hope you are liking our video today. If yes, like, share and comment. Also subscribe our channel. We will be coming soon with a new interesting video very soon.